welcome back to another video this is motivation for young christians welcome back welcome back in this bible study we have brother geo brother javi and a new guest brother josh today we'll be diving into john chapter 14 verses 1 through 14 to begin we're going to start off with a prayer by brother josh and then we're going to get straight into the word for today lord we thank you for this day father we just take this moment to honor you just to glorify you jesus we pray that you just be in the midst of this bible study as we take this time to dive into your word, Holy Spirit, we ask that you just be here with us, that you give us understanding, and we thank you that your word that is sharper than any two-edged sword will just cut through what it needs to cut through, Father, and that thank anyone who is watching this video, Father, that they will just be impacted by your word, God. We pray that you do what it is that you desire to do in our hearts and in the hearts of those who will be watching this, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I'll be reading from the NLT version. Verse 1 says, Don't let... You don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to repair a place? I'm going to prepare a place for you. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I'm going. Jesus' crib is mad big. <laughs> I went back to 13, and I just wanted to see, sometimes the previous chapter kind of picks up to the next chapter, or like it continues. He, um, in 13, it looks like he was wrapping up with him about to die, and I mean, about to, uh, him about to be betrayed, yeah. Um, and he's denying him three times. But then he's just like, listen, like, I, I know this part has to happen. Like, I have to be crucified, but, you know, don't be troubled, right? Like, <clears throat> Jesus is reassuring, reassuring us that though there may be turbulence in the midst of it, there's still peace. And I am that peace, right? Don't don't let your hearts be troubled. These things has to, they have to transpire. You have to endure them. You have to experience them. But remember, you have me through it all. Like I'm I'm your peace. Um. So that's that first part of the first scripture alone. Just for me, that no matter what's happening, just trust and believe that I'm here. That I will. <coughs> that I'm not going anywhere, right? He says, if you believe in God, believe also in me letting him know that there's no separation between Jesus, the son and God, the father. Um, but then he starts to go to the talk, making references about the kingdom, right? What, what life is going to be like in the future. And I, I think it speaks to uh, the security that we have in him, right? the place he's preparing is secure right? and eternal life. He's already made that way. And uh, my Bible it emphasized or it highlighted uh, the word room, and the Greek translation for that it means to remain, abide, um, or dwell. So he promised us that he has a place for us uh, to abide, right? To dwell with him, an eternal, in an eternal dwelling place with him. Right? Um, <coughs> so, yeah, that, that, that word room, right? there's enough room for us to, to dwell with him. When that day, when that uh, yeah, kind of piggybacking off of what Gervais said as far as security, um, I think it just attests to the fact that God is a man of his word. You know, it says, if this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? He told us he has a place for us. We have security in that fact. Um, I, think it, I think it speaks more to the Bible in general, right? We have so many promises from God and it's important that we don't allow our hearts to be troubled and that we continue to trust in these promises that he's given us. So that's mm -hmm. what I kind of take away from it. Big. I, that's big. I always ask people like that, that are new to the word, right? Like, why do you believe in Jesus? Like, why did you choose Jesus? Because your parents tell you to, because they make you go to work. I mean, make you go to uh, church. Um, like what, what's your reason? And then the next question is, you know, the promise, like, what, what, is, what has God promised you? <clears throat> like, what do you lean on when things are going bad? Like, what, what's your foundation look like? And Josh hit the nail on the head when he said the promises, right? Those things help encourage us. They help. 
that reassurance, like Gervais said, is just is huge. And I'm looking at the King James Version for verse 2. It says, in my father's house are many mansions. Mm-hmm. That's like the reverse, right? Uh, a mansion is a house, but in his house is a man is many mansions. It's like that's how much room there is for all of creation to make it in. Yeah. And this morning when I, I woke up to pray, I was just thinking about like. <clears throat> on Saturday, the Holy Spirit led, led me on Saturdays to pray for the, the the universe, the earth. And I was thinking about like what people look at Saturday night for. Turn up, get into something, right? And you have your percentage of people that get up after they turn up to go to church in the morning or what have you. But it's just like those were just completely distant from God. My prayer was just save them. Mm. Save them, like you know. I'm a basketball. <clears throat> I saw um, what's my guy name? Kevin uh, Kyrie. He comes out on 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 the court and he's burning sage. I read that last night. Yeah, yeah, he's burning sage, walking up and down the court, and it's just like, what's happening? Like, I I don't even know what that means. Like, I have to look deeper into that. Like, burning sage and 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 like, just I'm just questioning, like, who is it that he's believing in? You know, like, like, I was excited to see that we were making strides in the right way when you have a pandemic going on in the, in the world. But here in the nation of the U.S., you have um, a Christian pastor asked to, to pray over the nation, T.D. Jakes. And I was just, it, it's, that was good for me. Like, I was like, you know what? Yes, we're making strides in the right direction. They understand that Jesus <coughs> and the nation that we live in. Because if you go in, like, Egypt and you say that you're a Christian, they'll take your head off. Yeah. No, and and the fact that we have the liberty and freedom to walk around and 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 cry out Jesus, but we don't take advantage of it, it's just like for me, it's like it's it's it brings like pain to my heart. So the father having this house that fits mansions and reassuring that he's going and Jesus is going to make up the bed, fluff the pillows put the nice little peppermint on the pillow for he's just He's just preparing the room for us. Mm-hmm. And all we have to do is just do what he said in the first verse. Believe in God and also believe in me. Yeah. The great thing he said, he says, I will come and get you. You'd be excited about that. I'm not saying I'm looking forward to it. At that time, per se, right? I am, I am. I am, I am, I am. <laughs> oh, you're ready, you're ready. You're ready. Yo, 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 all I can remember is just that in Revelation, you say it won't be dark, no more night. We could play ball all day, all day, all day, <laughs> all day. We could hoop all day, all right? You don't got to worry about nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> no street lights. No street light, no street light. But yeah, we, 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 we have that, that, that assurance from his word. Jesus, my word cannot return unto me. Right? He said, I will come and get you. And the time is right. It's just key, you got to believe. Right? And I, will, I will come and the time is right because you're going to have a, a place of dwelling, a place that you can abide with me. I'm prepared for you. I agree. Agree. Agree with everybody said. Pretty much what y'all said is what I was going to say. Uh, uh, I love what y'all said. Uh, uh, diving into five. Um, no, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had already, if you uh, had really known me, you would know who my father is. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the father and we shall be satisfied. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip? And yet you still don't know who I am. Anyone who has seen, anyone who has seen me has seen the father. 
So why are you asking me to show him to you? Mr. Chen, don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The word I speak is not of my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. In verse six, uh, one of a popular verse, right? We always mm -hmm. hear um, everyone quoting that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I love how my study Bible puts it. Um, it says, uh, Jesus, as the way, he is our path to the Father. As the truth, he is the reality of God's promises. As the life, he joins his divine life to ours, both now and eternally. Jesus is, in truth, the only living way to the Father. So I love, I love how it broke that down. It says, uh, some people may argue that this way is too narrow. Right. Uh, through Jesus, if, we don't, if we're going only through Jesus, then we really don't have a chance. Where it's not wide enough for the whole world. But yet, if the whole world chooses to accept Christ, there's more than enough room, right? He said, the early verse we just read that in my father's house, there are many mansions, as the King James Version puts it. So now it's really on our willingness to believe, right? Not on how much room we ask for, but on our willingness to believe. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely like that scripture. Um, like you said, it's very familiar, and I've heard it many times. Um, I don't think I've ever had the proper meaning of it, but I think it definitely does attest to times we're living in, right? We have a very, we have a, a world that is very diverse in thought and a lot of people when it comes to like religious practices and religious beliefs um they have this idea that you know you live however you want but you have your afterlife promise but i think this scripture kind of eradicates all of that you know jesus is the way jesus is the truth and jesus is the life and I feel like a lot of times people kind of try to widen that narrow gateway, as you said. I think there's, that scripture is from Matthew. It says, you know, it's a, it's a narrow gateway to get into heaven. So it's not easy. But when you do accept Jesus, I know that these promises are made available to you. So I, I think it's definitely, I'm actually going to highlight it because I think that's definitely an important scripture uh, to remember. Absolutely. It is. And I like the fact that Jesus always acknowledged that my words are not about my own with my father who speak through me. I love the fact that he don't take credit for God's work. Cause that's something I think a lot of people do. Like we can't take credit for what God has done. You can only take credit for what you physically have done. Like what, the, what was only you, but anything that was came from God, you gotta, you gotta give God his credit. I make sure I do that um, with my channel. This is all God. I, I'm just, I'm, God is just telling me what I need to do on this channel, and I do it. This channel is God's channel, and he speak through me. I'm just following his direction and his lead. Whatever he tell me I need to do, I need to do it. I'll make sure I always acknowledge uh, God through that. And in any other area of my life, uh, whether it comes down to motivational speaking, I'm acknowledge God in that. Uh, anything, we just always got to remember, acknowledge God for what he has done. Because our words is not our words. God's That's important, bro. Yeah. Definitely. I heard, a, I heard a sermon the other day, actually, and this lady was speaking about um, glory in general, and she used a term I never heard before. She used the term glory thieves, and she was kind of speaking about how with the gift that God gives us, we have a lot of people who will go out and will make it seem like that gift is their own. But God gives us the gift, right? And we work in the gift and we can't take glory for that. All the glory has to go to God, right? So like I, I sing, right? Um, I, I'm blessed to be able to sing and be able to lead worship in different congregations. That's a God-given gift. So someone can come and compliment me on my voice, but it's not because I woke up one day and I was just, I was just knowing how to sing. No, that's a blessing from the Lord. So I definitely agree. It's definitely important to make sure that we are putting God first in all of that, making sure that we remain humble. Um, there's also that song, uh, To God Be the Glory, and a specific verse in it says, and shall I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. So, you know, when we receive these compliments, when we receive this 
praise for lack of a better word we have to make sure that we are shooting it all back to jesus because like you said Ezron, he is the reason he is what we do this all for and he's the reason we're able to do it in the first place so i definitely think that was a great point to make mom that's that's one thing that Javé and Gio pointed out to me. They say anytime anybody give you compliments, make sure you acknowledge God. This is not your talent. This is God's talent. He 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 works through you. Uh, my talent for well, not my talent, but my God given talent for preaching that comes from God. I didn't I, I didn't wake up one day and was like, yo, I'm going to preach. God had that plan. I had no plans on preaching. But God instilled that gift in me, and I I continue along with his help work on my gift. Motivational speaking, God instilled that gift in me, and I just continue to work aside him on that gift. So anytime people give me compliments, whether it's on the channel with my videography and my editing, whatever title I have and somebody compliments it, I make sure I'll be like, uh, to God be the glory. Instead of saying thank you, I just say to God be the glory, because I'm going to make sure I acknowledge God. Uh, and also, they always tell me to stay home, always. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, I think I've told both of you on that something. Um, other people compliment you or you say, I was a good sermon. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to say. I think that's what you did great in leading worship. You always, as God has said, and I love that you remember that, you always point it back to God. Right? Um, I always say to God, be the glory. That's what I've learned from my mentor. The same thing I tell y'all, right? It's, it's not about y'all. It's all about God. And he receives all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And the reason why I keep telling you that it's easy, right? When you start hearing it a lot, you start feeling it, you start feeling yourself. And you get so sidetracked with it. And you start thinking, oh, this is not me, I, I think great. And you start really feeling yourself. And it's, it's not about you. It's always about God. Right? So I'm glad that y'all remember that. When you guys are receiving those compliments, those words of affirmation that you're, you're pointing it back to God. Right? As you as you're ministering, whether that's speaking or leading worship, you're also seeking the anointing. Right? Mm -hmm. Because it's the anointing that makes that gift function effective, right? To be able to do what it is that God has put you in that position to do. Right? So continue to ask God to anoint you. Refresh. Yeah. We can talk more about anointing another time because I know that's not the basis of our study today. So we're receiving this verse, these two verses that Philip did not yet understand that in Jesus uh, he was seeing the full embodiment of God, which he didn't realize that it's in. Right? Uh, we have to understand that Jesus is the visible, tangible image of the invisible God. Right? We speak to uh, of, of Jesus. We, we we know he has right, two natures. He has divine nature. He has a human nature. Right? The human nature allows him to relate to you and not to man. Right? So he was referred to as the Son of Man. Right? And as the Son of God, his other nature refers to his divinity. Right? But he's fully God and fully man. Right? He's not half God, half man. Fully God, fully man, right? So it's, when we talk about the Trinity, right? We talk about God the Father, God the Son, still God, right? But different in their personality, right? Different in their three different persons, right? But connected with an eternal purpose, if that makes sense. And so Philip did not realize that I mean, in being connected to God, that he was also excuse me, being connected to Jesus, that he was also connected to God. And so Jesus is the complete revelation of what God is like. And as Jesus explained to Philip, those who wanted to see the Father, that to know Jesus is to know God. Does that make sense? Make sense? Yeah. Yes, sounds good. Okay. Yep. Yes, it does. Uh, verse 11 through 14, just believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me and anyone who believes in me will do the same work I have done, and even greater work, because I am going to be with the Father. 
you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the son will bring glory to the father. Yes, ask me anything in my name and I will do it. I like, I definitely like verse 12. I, I would definitely like more understanding on it though, because it's like to think greater works, greater works to Jesus. Like how, what does that even look like? You know, um, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works. I've, Javay, you think you can explain that somewhere? Yeah, yeah. And that's another verse we hear a lot, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we speak about greater works. The greatest thing we've read about, in, in, in a sense, is Jesus raising the dead. Right? Mm -hmm. Lazarus was dead. Humble came back to life. We're not going to see that present day, per se. Um, but the greater work that he's speaking of is that when he left earth he would send the holy spirit right so the holy spirit will come um, to empower our works so the, the greater works is the spread of the gospel not necessarily outdoing what jesus did in his time on earth he's not saying we're going to do more miracles than him. he's saying because of the holy spirit now jesus could be here where i'm sitting and here there where you are there where you are as well and because we're in different locations, we have the ability through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to spread the gospel to different places, right? Jesus was limited uh, to his location. As the son of man, right, he could only be in one location at a time, right? They didn't have Ubers, they didn't have Lyft, right? They didn't have trains or buses or airplanes. So they, they walked everywhere, right? Or they, mm. they used a donkey. And so he can only get so far, right? But because of the Holy Spirit, he would send the Holy Spirit to empower the works, right? We can spread the gospel in New York, in Boston, in Cali, right? In Jamaica, in Guyana, and in Barbados, right? Because the Holy Spirit is empowering us to do the work. Right? Does that make sense? It does. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. That, that do and I, I can see my I see myself in um what you just say, cause you, like you said, Jesus was limited, but now with every single thing that God has presented with us, all the resources, we can spread the gospel wherever. Like this video, this video can be seen anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's down to like Jamaica, Guyana, Barbados, Trinidad, uh, Africa, Asia, China, Australia, or right here in the United States or even Canada, it can be spread anywhere. But like what John said, I don't think I don't think anybody could outdo God, uh, outdo Jesus. Uh, I don't think. Yeah, I that's what my confusion was at first. I was like, greater. I was really trying to yeah. picture that in my head. I was like, greater work. But no, it makes sense now. And it's funny because I, I feel like, I think I did. I posted something along these lines the other day, just talking about you know like all the resources we have nowadays. And it's like when you put it when you put it in perspective like that, it's like Jesus had no limitations but he still had limitations at the same time right like he could do what he needed to do but he was limited to where his location was at the time and now we have instagram and snapchat and youtube and all this great stuff and yeah. I, I, now that i think about it it's like modern day christians you know or at least leaders and ministers really don't have an excuse as to why they're not making disciples of jesus christ as like much as they should, you know, because we have the resources, we have these things available to us that even the son of God didn't have at the time. Yeah. So I think, it, I think it's definitely empowering in a way. And I think it also reminds us that, you know, there's always more we should be doing and yeah. that we should just continue to strive, you know, to make those disciples since we, since we're blessed with those resources. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's really I, like, imagine, imagine, you know, if, if COVID-19 took place in their time, right? And I know they didn't necessarily, they, meet, they met in houses for, for service and for worship, right? Um, but imagine COVID hit and everyone was quarantined at home, right? And there was no Zoom for them, right? So how would they get the word? How would the teachers um, teach? How would they congregate, right? They couldn't go to each other's homes. So um, yes, we, as you said, Josh, we have so many resources the tip of our fingers, really, and mm -hmm. that we can use to spread the gospel throughout the entire world. All right. And I'm very thankful for those resources. 
because my ministry started online and thanks to the, the resource that God has provided, I was able to start my ministry online and then eventually take it in uh, to the church. And I don't know, I don't know how I would have started my ministry if it wasn't for um, online. I, I really don't know how I would have started it because it was way more easier to just do ministry online than in church. Uh, no offense to like no like ruin and shooting at the church at, at all. That's not what I'm doing, but I'm just saying like it was way more easier to just record a video. Today we're going to be talking about fear, what the Bible says about fear, pinning it and then push it out there. I don't, I don't need nobody permission. I don't need to schedule a date. It was just way more easier to just put it out there. And I just thank uh, God for his resource because I'm able to do this. And I just can't wait to see what God is um, going to just bring with this with this ministry and all the uh, people I'm able to touch, all the people I'm going to reach, all the stuff that I'm going to be able to do. Like, I just, I can't wait, but I'm also going to make sure I wait because with more uh, with more stewardship comes more responsibility. And I'm just gonna be a steward of what over I have right now. So that way I can make my mistakes and learn what I need to learn. So by the time I get there, I will know how to handle it properly with God's guidance. Amen, bro. So uh, verse 13, 14. Uh, now, I, I love these verses. I know sometimes we use them out of context. Right. Uh, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Yeah, we, we use that, even I, to, to use it out of context. Right? And, and mm. sometimes we like to think that God is uh, like a magician. Right. I'm asking for a new car and it's going to happen. If I say, in the name of Jesus, he's going to do it. And then even us that know the word, you know, we, we like to pray the word. And just because we said, we remind him, God, you said if we ask you for anything in your name, you will do it. And it doesn't work like that, right? When Jesus says we can ask for anything, we have to remember that our asking, yes, it must be in his name, but it must be according to his character and it must be according to his will. Right? Um, so whenever we pray, whenever I pray, my prayer is uh, I'm asking for some, some uh, specific thing. I'm saying, God, if it's your will, right, you, you let it be done. So I'm praying the will of the Father. God will not grant requests contrary to his nature or his will. We cannot use his name as a magic formula to fulfill our selfish desires. If we're sincerely following God and seeking to do his will, then our requests will be in line with what he wants. Thus, he will grant those, right? Once it's in line with what he wants. Right? And the more we're connected to him, the more we, we go deeper in him, that we will learn the will of the Father. We'll learn the heart of the Father, right? And so our prayers begin to line up with his desires. So we begin to pray the will of the Father. Then we will see, as we ask, He do. So we all have um, a victim today using God like He is a genie. And I make sure I watch, uh, I watch um, with my praise and make sure that I don't do that. And for the program that I, 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 I went to sign up for and see if I get in, right, right before I sent out that application, I was like, God, if it's your will, Meet again this program. God be the glory. If it's not your will and you don't and you have some other plans for me, to God be your, to God be the glory. Because one thing I understand is that God will not let an opportunity come your way because He have a greater opportunity for you. Uh, and I've I've really seen that a lot in my life. So when an opportunity don't come your way, don't be mad at God. Don't be upset about it. Just know. Something big is going to come your way because if God not letting you get that is because he has a greater plan for you. Definitely. I think that's that's also important to remember. Um, also, uh, kind of piggybacking off of what you were said earlier, talking about earlier when you were talking about regards to your ministry, um, like how you do YouTube and stuff like that, um, not everyone's path is the same. Not everyone's journey is the same, right? So God has given you a blessed ministry through YouTube. This is how you minister. 
right? Um, God has blessed Jave to be able to speak to a congregation and to minister that way, right? And while I do some of that, um, the Lord has blessed me and given me the gift to minister through song and to minister through music. All three are effective and they're all our individual callings. It is so cool to see how the Lord works through that. I just wanted to say that. But also about what we were just speaking on, on verses 13 and 14, I definitely get what you're saying because I've also been there. I, I've also been like, uh, Lord, touch the situation in the name of Jesus. And like, okay, it's going to be done now. It doesn't always work like that, right? And I'm, I'm still at the point in my life where I'm trying to find the balance. I'm trying to find the balance of praying in faith in Jesus name and understanding the Lord's will. And that, you know, just because I'm praying in faith and putting his name on it, it's not necessarily going to happen. Right. So I'm, I'm really trying to, uh, I don't have an answer for it, but I'm still trying to understand that formula, if you will. Um, because like I said, you know, you can pray for something, you can say in Jesus name and it doesn't necessarily happen because it wasn't his will. So I definitely get what you're saying, Jave, when you say, you know, you want it to be done in the will of the father. But then I have this thought in the back of my head and I'm like, if it's not in God's will, what's the point of praying about it in the first place? And it probably sounds like a pretty elementary question, but that's kind of where my head is at right now. It's like, I could have a situation that's really bothering me in life and I could, I could pray and I could ask God to remove that infirmity um, out of my life. And it might not be in his will for it to be removed at that point. So I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's where, that's where my head is kind of at right now. It's like, what, what is the point of, and I hope that it doesn't even sound rude, but what is the point of, you know, putting that time into praying for a situation that might not change in the first place? I don't know if you have an answer for that, but it's just something that was on my mind. Before Javay answer, I'm sure you, uh, I've been in a situation like like that where I go through something and I'm asking God, like, heal me from me, heal me from me. And then God don't, I'm like, God, what you trying to do? But I uh, like the word, the word says, not my will, but your will be done. Just remember that any situation you're going through it, in your prayer, just make sure you say, not my will, but your will be done. Because okay. our will and God will is not the same. All right. Well, for you, it's going to be different. So make sure anytime you're just going through a situation, just make sure you say, not my will, but your will be done. Whatever your will is going to be done, God, I want to go for it. I, I want you to work with your will. Don't worry about me. I want to worry about what you have planned for me because what you have planned for me is going to be important and what myself is going to have planned for me. And it's going to work better because your plan for yourself is going to be like, eh, eh. but God's plan is going to be it. It's going to be, everything is going to be playing out strategic. Everything is just going to be good. Uh, Javed? Yeah, Ben. So you were saying kind of like, what's, what's the point of, of praying if it's not going to change, Josh? In a way, yeah. In yeah. a way. Yeah, I get what you mean. But I, I, think, I think in praying, though, remember, praying, we're just talking to God, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so in talking to God, you learn it. There's a point he's going to talk back to you, right? Mm-hmm. He's going to answer you. And so in, in the, him talking back, you give you the answer, right? Uh, possibly. Yeah, I will change it or no, right? Um, my pastor usually says God gives three answers. Um, yes, no, or wait, right? Yes, no, or wait, right? So in praying and talking, you get a clearer picture on what God is trying or what God is going to do, what God wants to do. So you begin to understand his will, right? Because it's back and forth communication, right? You pray or you speak to him, he speaks back to you. You have to listen. And when I think about that, um, what's the point in, in praying? I, I reminded of the three Hebrew boys for some reason, mm-hmm. right? That when King Nebuchadnezzar told them to bow, um, they said, we will not bow, right? And even if the Father does not deliver us, right, um, we still will not bow, right? Now I'm thinking now, as I really see a question that even if we pray about something and God does not change it, right? We have an understanding that we should have an understanding that he's doing it for a reason, right? That truly 
ourselves. We're never in anything that we're going through by ourselves, if that makes sense. Right? Because at the end of that story, what happens? The Bible says um, that King Nebuchadnezzar and the officials, they saw not three, but four in the fire, right? And it, the Holy Spirit was the one with them. As some versions will put it, angel of the Lord. It was the Holy Spirit that was with them. So even though you may be in something, it's like, what's the point? Praying. Um, one, I believe in praying, you, you gain understanding, a clearer picture of what God is trying to do in his will. Uh, but two, that no matter what you're going through, that God is with you all the way, right? He said, no, I will be with you all the way, right? All the time. doesn't matter what it is. I, I will be with you, right? But I think in talking to him, you have that back and forth dialogue. You get a clearer understanding of what God is doing, right? Your perspective is changed, it's enlightened. Mm -hmm. And like I say, you, you get a, a clearer picture of, of what's going on. I hope that makes sense. I hope that answers. It does, it does. Um, that, that definitely answered my question. Like I was saying, I was confused on, and I hope that didn't sound like a dumb question. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. No yeah, but no, I, I get it. Um, by praying, even though that specific situation may not change, we gain insight, you know, on what the mm -hmm. Lord wants to do, what his will is regarding the situation. Whether we like whether we like the outcome or not, we still have an answer from him. We still have his desire regarding the situation. So I get it. It's almost like every prayer is effective in one way or another. So I Yeah, know. yeah, absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says what uh, to trust in the Lord with all thy heart, right? Mm -hmm. Lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge me, and I will direct you. Right? So even in difficulty and, and adversity and opposition, I'm choosing to trust God. And he's going to lead me through it. He's going to lead us through that. He's going to lead you through that. Right? Help you to navigate uncharted waters. Right? Help, mm -hmm. help you to navigate um, the, the fiery furnace. Help you to navigate um, the deep troubled waters. Right? That, mm -hmm. That's why we pray. That, that's why we talk to him. That's why we, we have fellowship and communion so he can lead us and guide us and talk to us. Show us which way. All right. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for coming back to the video. Thank you. Thank you. Next week, we'll be back with another episode of Bible Study. If you haven't already liked the video, hit a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe. Turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload a video, YouTube will send you a notification. I love you guys. And I thank you guys for coming back to each and every single video. This is Motivation Beyond Christian. I'm out. Peace.